Hey y'all, what's going on? This is Big Phil 20 hitting you guys up again. And, um, same video, same day, whatever, whatever. Um, I just got finished watching, catching up on that MTV show Catfish. Now, I like that show, say what you gotta say, feel how you gotta feel, and we'll keep on moving. But I like that show, it gives me life, it gives me entertainment, and it gives me real tea. Now, I don't think I have to explain to you what the show is by now, but I'll give those who really, truly do not know what that show is about, um, a little disclaimer, a little disclaimer about it. Catfish is a show made up by a guy named Neve, who was fooled, who was online dating somebody about, like, a couple years ago, and he was fooled on that show, I mean, he was fooled, like, the person, um, the woman was not who she claimed to be, as many of these online dating situations happen, the, per the person is lying to you, and they made it into a documentary film, and it was this big old hit, and he won awards for it, and it was just really cool, so he decided to turn it into a show where he's helping other people connect with their online loves to see if it's really real, and not just catfish. Okay, so, this episode <laughs> was my favorite episode of the entire fucking season, and I'll tell you why. Rod and fucking T.S. Ebony, honey, that sh that's, this episode to me gave me fucking life I, I've never, ever, ever seen before in my motherfucking life. It gave me so much life because Rod's tea was clocked so well. I am so glad. I am so fucking glad. First of all, the episode, Mr. Rod is this black dude who made an online account on a gay website, but he's straight. Wow, that almost sounds like a null and void statement. That almost sounds like... What? That doesn't exist. Let me repeat that. Rod made an online account on a gay dating website citing that he's straight and he was looking for straight women on that site because he had it in good authority, I guess, that straight women um, go on gay sites. I'm not sure. I, I don't know. But that's what he felt. Ooh, that was strike number one, Rod. Strike number one. Then he meets up with Ebony on the site, and they've been talking for the past. They've been chatting with each other for the past, oh, was it four years or two years? I forgot. They were chatting with each other for like the past four years, and he grown to really like her, and she revealed to him that she was a TS girl. Now, if you don't know what TS means, that's a transsexual, transgender woman. Um, a man to female, a male to female uh, transition. Um... And he was like, he said, at first I was feeling some kind of way about it, but um, then he said, I really liked her energy, and I liked her spirit, and she's beautiful. And so he became open to the idea of dating a TS girl. And I was like, okay, but we'll, we'll just clock, I'll clock the T in a second before, while I give you the rundown. So he thought that she was a TS girl, so he would continue to talk to her. Mind you, Neve and... Neve and his little partner in crime, they were giving me, they were giving me, they were giving, they were doing shade the whole motherfucking episode. They were just like, really? Really? And you're straight. Now, mind you, I'm a, I'm, I have a psychology degree, so I know, all, and a minor in women and gender studies. So, and uh, one of the classes I took was about uh, sexuality and um, um, gender and sexuality class. And it was talking about trans, we had a huge section on transgender uh, people, and um, you can we can argue all up and down all day about whether a man who is in love with a transgender woman is indeed a straight man or a gay man. Um, it's open for interpretation. There is no right or wrong answer. I personally believe that that they just don't fit a gender binary, so you really don't know the answer to that. Um, it's just a specified group to me. Trans people are just a specified group. But since, you know, the TS women believe are, are in their minds and feel as women, then I, I'm supposing that we're supposed to gear towards the fact that the man who falls in love with them really still is a straight man. They just look past the fact that she's a TS woman. So, off of that, Sorry, y'all. So off of that, anyway, 
going back to it, um, that's not my problem with motherfucking Rod, okay? That's not my problem with Rod, okay? Let me clock the tea on Rod. This is how Rod came into the episode. So I really liked this girl, you know? And she was just really, I just, she just really had a great spirit and she was so cool. Like, I mean, I'm really feeling her, but I'm straight and I was confused at first. And But I'm not confused about my sexuality. I really am not. You were giving me all types of bam, 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 bam. That's what you were giving me, Rod. The whole episode, Rod was acting like a fucking queen. He didn't even like. I, and, and you know, MTV has had men on these shows before who seemed to me, I read gay, but they acted straight. And they did a way better job than Rod did on this episode of Catfish. Because Rod was not even hiding it. Rod was like, he had to lift, and he had a little bit of a twitch to his twang. And he was just, you know, he kind of had that look on his face. And so I was just like, there is nothing straight about this man, in my opinion. I know a gay man when I see one. That was definitely a gay man. That was a, I don't understand. I don't understand. That was a gay man. Sorry. It was. I'm sorry. Say what you want. Feel how you want to feel. And we can keep it all moving. That was a gay man. So, <laughs> and Neve and his, um, and that, and that camera guy, they were just like, I think you're confused. And he's like, I'm not confused. And I said, okay. So, here's where it goes south for me. Here's the funny part of the fucking bullshit. He goes and meets the girl. They set it up and everything. She's all willing to do it. She's super excited. We we pull up to her house. And out of all the fucking episodes, finally we have a bitch, a person, where you pull up to their house and their house actually looks like it, it exists in the 21st century. Finally we have a person who has a house and a living quarters where it looks as if they are taking care of themselves. Finally, we have somebody who has upgraded because all that, all that shit before, and all them other houses and all them other apartments they've been coming up to, um, in the previous episodes, shanty towns. <laughs> I'm like, damn. But anyway, Ebony had it come together, and she came out there, and she was. And I gotta say, Ebony is a gorgeous woman. She really is. She's a gorgeous. Um, brown skin voluptuous woman and she had oh my god she had her her clothes was nice she had the jewelry and accessories going on and I was like Ebony you work it you working it you working it when I first saw her I knew she wasn't transgender and she revealed that she wasn't but before she revealed that she wasn't let me write let me write out on Rod for a second now I thought that the nature of this show was people would contact me and say, I want to make sure this person is real that I'm talking to. But nothing about Rod's account was real. He had fake photos. He lied about his name. And I'm like, wait a second, we just did a fucking reverse, um, um, we just did a motherfucking reverse situation here. Because when she came outside, she looked exactly like the, the way her, her pictures looked when she sent it to him. She really did. And she was very beautiful and very gorgeous. And she was who she said she was. He lied about everything. And he he contacted me. I found that to be very suspect and interesting, in my opinion. And that already told me that there's something off about Rod. Anyway, if it wasn't for his mannerisms and him believing up and down and declaring that he was straight. <clears throat> Rod, you got issues. Okay? But anyway... So she, you know, she looked past that. At first she was a little pissed, but she said, okay, you're not who you say you are, and, you know, you know, you don't look like the way you look on those pics, and you, you, your name is, isn't what I thought it was. It's actually Rod, but that's fine. Even though that was stupid shit to argue about, I mean, that was stupid shit to lie about, which I'll make a video about that in another time. Lying about dumb shit that you really didn't need to lie about, but now since you did lie about it, I don't trust you. But anyway... So, she said, um, you know, but I accept you anyway because, you know, we talked on, you know, we talked for four years and I just really wanted a companion and I would have accepted you if you would have shown me your real pictures and she was just really just lovely spirit, very lovely spirit, after she was pissed for a second, but 
but she was just a very lovely spirit. And then she revealed to him, she revealed to him that she was not a TS woman, that she was actually, in fact, a real, biologically born, real, biologically born real woman. And that's when the episode went to south. Because, honey, when I tell you when she told him that, that she was not working with an extra piece of equipment, he was like, all right, that's cool. I have never seen somebody be so disappointed in my life. And you should have seen the look on Nia's face. He was like, Neve was giving it. I love me some Neve. I love you, Neve. If you ever need help on your little show, I'm here to help you. I would love to be on there to be that that person on the sideline clocking tea and giving very very witty gay commentary that makes everybody laugh. Because Neve, you was giving it. You was serving it. Neve, you was serving it without even saying anything. So he was just kind of like, oh, okay. And he was just clearly done. And then he had the nerve when he sat outside with uh, Neve to say, I'm straight. But, um, because Neve was like, you seem disappointed that she was not transgender. And he was like, I'm straight. Is it raining? Sorry about that, y'all. He was like, I'm straight, but, um, um, I was clearly using her for the money. From I was so excited to meet her, and I was so excited to get into a relationship with this Ebony, this TS woman, to no tea, no shade. I'm trying to get back. <laughs> no tea, no shade. I'm trying to get paid. I was like, girl, I, when me and my family watched this, and my friends watched this, we died. We died so much. We were like, he is looking so heartbroken. Don't try to play Rod. You was mad that she had real click and not a dick. She had a click, not a dick. And you tell me something you straight. Bitch, no, you were not. You really wanted that meat. You wanted that sausage. <laughs> and then went back and talked to him, oh, you need to help him because he, um, he need, because she was paying his boots more. I felt so bad for Ebony. I really did. And I really hope she finds what she is looking for Seriously, I hope she does. Because Ebony, she just had such a kind spirit. And, you know, you are a beautiful woman. And she ended up making a YouTube channel where she was explaining that she just really wanted a gay best friend. And she thought that he was going to be her gay best friend. Now, um, I, we all know he's gay. And he just had issues with his sexuality being displayed on camera. We do. So, you know what, Ebony, honey, you don't need to... You, you are just a beautiful woman. You guys together. I don't know where it is you're from or where you're at you, but you really don't need to resort to that to find a gay best friend you can probably find one on Facebook really quickly um <laughs> our Craigslist shit you know no 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 don't don't do Craigslist but you know there are plenty of other gay men in that area I'm sure that you can find you'd be best friends with and you know I'm sure hope you find one so I would have been her best friend we would have kikied and ha ha it up you know but Emmy, you were just you know had a kind spirit. But that 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 show, that episode gave me life. It really did. I like how she was done with him in the end. She cussed his ass out and she was done with it. Neve, he was kind of giving the two to Ebony, and I like how she almost read him too. But um, you know, and then people were gonna sit there trying to say, well, she lied about being a TF girl. But he said he was a straight man. Clearly, he said that. So, because you became comfortable with the idea of her being TS, and then you found that she's not, he kept because he kept going back to the fact like you lied about that. That was a big thing to lie about. And it seems to me that you would be not ha not elated because you know she still lied, but at the same time, you would be like, oh, okay, well, <laughs> you know, I was I was gonna accept you because I loved you anyway. But, you know, it's even better. You're a real woman. Not dissing transgender women, but coming from where he was coming from, saying he was a straight man that just accepted the fact that she was transgender. I thought he would be happy to find out that she wasn't. Clearly, we were wrong about that. Get into it. So, anyway. Okay, so here's the other thing I want to talk about real quick. I need to clock this tea. The tea needs to be clocked. Speaking of the range queens. Um...
Notre Dame has a linebacker named Manti Teo, and he has been the front news for weeks now, and he is getting on my last motherfucking nerves. Okay? First of all, the reason I'm correlating these two stories together is because supposedly Manti Teo has been catfished. Now, Notre Dame is widely known and just very prestigious for its football team. And it's known for its, its, its epic games and just how seriously they take their football team. And in order even to be on that football team, period, it was an honor, you know, because it's very hard to, to get recruited onto that team. You know, just watch Rudy. Um, <laughs> y'all know that movie. Don't try to play. Y'all know y'all see that movie, Rudy, with that dude from uh, Lord of the Rings. Back in the 90s, he was in that movie. But that kid who was like a, um, who really wanted to play uh, Notre Dame football and was against all the eyes. You know, you remember those little heartwarming 1990s movies back then. But anyway, so Manti Teo was a part of this motherfucking scandal where... He was, like, going on and on and waxing poetic about his girlfriend being dead. And then it turns to, turns to find out that she was, um, never existed. She, him or somebody else was posting uh, pictures of another woman. And that bitch clearly was like, oh, hell no. When she saw her pics on TV, she was like, uh-uh, uh-uh, I ain't dead. <laughs> I don't know who the fuck this bitch was. I don't even remember what the, the, uh... Karuchi Tran, I don't know what the what the girl's name was, the fake profile girl's name was, but you know, you really, really. Now, my problem with this whole situation is this: I shit happens. People are a part of scandals, whatever, what have you. Why the fuck do we need to hear about this past Yahoo Mail? Why do we need to hear this past Yahoo News, I mean? Why do we need to hear this? It's on TV. He's getting Katie Couric interviews. He's getting the you know interviewed by The View. He's Anderson Cooper's talking about him. All these people are talking about him. And for what? Because he made a fake profile about some bitch and then lied about her dying and having cancer? I'm confused. I'm confused. And for all y'all who were co-signing behind him saying that, yeah, he was catfished, I don't believe that for one motherfucking second. That motherfucker was not catfished. He had a part in that. And I believe that he did that scandal to get him more notoriety. Which I don't believe, I don't understand why, because from what I hear it, he was like a draft pick. Like, they really wanted to put him, they wanted to recruit him from the NFL. But I guess more scandal means more publicity, and so people can look at him and be like, Oh my God, this sad, this sad, sad linebacker. He, uh, his girlfriend just died of cancer, and oh my goodness, I, I, I don't know what to do. Bitch, scratch your ass and get glad. Oh, girl. And then he, his, and this re the reason I know he's lying is because his story has changed so much. He is a liar, and he is hosting a whole slew of lies and having the nerve to shed them big ass crocodile tears on TV knowing damn well that you and your dad uh, orchestrated this damn fake profile because your dad is co-signing talking about something I heard her voice I was with him when he went to go visit her then all of a sudden oh I never met her but then you talking about oh yeah I did lie a little bit but I never lied bitch you're a liar okay you're a liar and his dad gonna be on TV talking about some my son you don't know my son. My son's not a liar. He just lied. Seems to me that when you tell a lie, it makes you a liar. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm getting, maybe the whole English the vocabulary has changed and, you know, the meaning of words have changed. I don't know. I may be behind the times, but when you tell lies, that makes you a liar. Now, I understand standing behind your son, but bitch, if you truly gonna stand behind your son, you need to smack his ass on the head and be like, what the fuck? I t see, be see, kids don't get ass whoopings like the way they used to. Okay? <laughs> if that was my damn son, I'd be like, don't bring me on no TV for no bullshit like that. <laughs> Just go ahead and tell him you was lying and be done with it. Okay? Shit. <laughs> 
that's some bullshit. I don't, I don't understand. Yo, Manti Teo, Manti Teo, Manti Teo, or however the hell you say his name, he is a deranged queen, okay? He is a deranged queen who fucking lied, and I don't give a fuck what nobody says. I don't feel sorry for his ass. He lied, he told lies, he was not catfish, he made that profile up, and even if he didn't, he was in on the bullshit. Okay? I believe he was. Because his story done changed so many damn times. Sorry. I'm not judging, but I'm just saying. You're a fucking liar. This is Big Zoe 20, you guys. If you guys don't watch Catfish, please get into it. It's a really good show. I love it. Um, my friends love it. My family loves it. We all love the show. Um, Manny Teo, get help. You know, I still hope you get a good placement in the draft pick, whenever that is. And, you know... Stop. Let's, let, here's the last thing. People, people really need to stop. Stop coming up with these crazy antics for notoriety and popularity and fame. Okay? If you are good at what you do, your talent speaks for itself. Not this bullshit cockamamie story and, and, and making up this shit so people can look at you and be like, Oh my God, I'm so... He, this heartwarming story. No. The heartwarming story is that you worked hard and perfected your craft and you got picked and you are living the American dream. Okay? Big Zell 20, you guys. Peace.